obviously uh, anyone who thinks seriously about life has to deal with the question of the purpose of creation. So all philosophers, all thinkers, every movement has as, at its center an explanation or a reason for creation. Even in the Torah we find more than one explanation. In one place we find that God created the world, the purpose of creation was to express God's kindness. Since kindness is not something you can practice when you're alone, you have to have someone to be kind to. So God created the world and God created us in order to express his kindness. In another place we find that God created the world in order to express his royalty. Since God is a king, and you can't have a king without people, without a nation, and so God created the world and created us to express his malchut, his royalty, his kingship. But these reasons, these explanations, do not go to the heart of the question. They don't really explain why God created the world. They explain more how God created the world. If we want to know with what God created the world, or what did God invest into the world, here the Gemara tells us that he created the world out of kindness, not because of kindness, out of kindness. Or in the Zohar, where we find that God created the world because of his out of royalty, uh, to express his royalty. But that's not the reason for the creation itself. When it comes to the reason itself, what made God create a world or want to create a world? What was the purpose that started the whole process that involved God's kindness, God's royalty? Here we find the Medrash. The Medrash says that God created the world because he desired a dwelling place in the lower world. Of all the possible creations, this is the lowest world. The reason for that is because in this world, one can live an entire lifetime and ignore God completely, not be affected at all. This is the lowest possible condition because the next lower possibility would be a world in which not only can you deny and ignore God for a lifetime, but a world in which one is incapable of knowing God or recognizing God. And such a world has no purpose at all. So this world, a world in which one is capable, has the choice of ignoring godliness, this is the lowest possible condition. So the Medrash says that of all possible worlds and of all possible creations, God desired a dwelling place in the lowest world. What does this mean? Hasidus explains that when we say that God desired what we're, what we're saying really is that this want, this choice that God has, where he chooses to find the dwelling place for himself in the lower world, this can only be described as a desire, not as a plan, not as an idea, but as a desire. And we use the word desire because we have no other word. But what we're trying to say is that this instinct, if you want to call it that, that made God create the world, 
has no logical reason. Now, some people say everything God does is for a good reason, and if we don't understand the reason, it's only because we're not smart enough. But someday, maybe, hopefully, we will, we will be told, we will discover, God will reveal his reason. When the Medrash says that God desired, the Medrash is telling us that he had no reason. He had no reason. It's not that we are not intelligent enough to understand the reason. There is no reason to understand. There is no reason to discover. God had no reason. He had a desire. And what was that desire? To have a dwelling place in the lower world. What does it mean, God had no reason? How could God do something without a reason? For a human being to do something without a reason is usually considered a failure. If you haven't thought it through and you don't know what you're doing and you don't have a good reason for what you're doing, then you're not a mensch. Then people lose respect for you. But that's because the human condition is governed by reason. If you don't have reason, then how are you different from an animal? So it's the intelligence of the human being that defines the human being. And we can't be any more than human. So for us, it is a virtue to always have a solid, sound reason for what we do. But with with the Ebishter, it's the exact opposite. To say that the Ebishter had a good reason is to diminish the project. Because if the project was only because of a reason, then it is not the greatest and the most important thing. Because God created reason. So it doesn't make sense to say God created the world for a good reason. Before God created the world, there was no reason. There was no logic. There was no seichel. Seichel is a created thing. So go back to the question. What is the purpose of creation? And you look for an intelligent answer. You'll never find it. Because there can't be an intelligent reason for creation. The question is, why did God create intelligence? So before there was intelligence, before there was time and before there was space, why did God create the world? That's like some people say, you mean you believe God created the world 5,752 years ago? Why didn't he create it a year earlier? Why didn't he create it before that? And the answer is, 5,753 years ago, time didn't exist. There was no time. So there wasn't a year before that. 5,752 years ago, God created time. Before that, there was no time. And when there is no time, there is no before, and there is no after. So you can't say, why didn't God create the world before? And the same is true with intelligence. You can't say that God created the world for an intelligent reason because we're talking about a time when there was no reason and there was no intelligence. So the Medrash says God desired a dwelling place in the lower world. That's really the beginning, the first stirrings of creation. Now, rather than be disappointed that creation doesn't have a logical reason, we, we should be overwhelmed and awed by the fact that God created the world and wanted this world to exist even before there was a good reason. That makes the world so much greater, so much holier, so much more a part of him, because he created the world when there wasn't even a reason. 
he was the reason. Or as somebody said recently, if you were God, why would you create the world? And that various explanations were offered, but the ultimate answer is, if you were God, you would create the world the same way he created the world. You would create the world because that's what God wants. And if you were God, that's what you would want. So what makes God create the world? Only himself. Not a good reason. And therefore we can't say God created the world because he wanted to express his kindness. Well, then God has no freedom of choice. Because to express your kindness, you have to create a world. So God was forced by his emotions to create a world? Or if you had a good reason to create the world, was he then compelled by logic to create a world? God is much greater than logic. He is the creator of logic. So when we say that God desired, what we're saying is that it is within God. It's within the Abishtah himself to create a world, even before there is kindness and before there is royalty and before there is Seichel and logic.